On the Air, episode 119. Mark? Let's give it, up. Bobby. give it up for the audience, there the live go. audience. Give it up for the James Tommy Band. That's right. You get closer to the center of the stage every single time, James. I, like, no, one, no, no, no. There's a whole space right there, pal. I was no. <laughs> James East, three Grammys, four Tonys, a restraining order. So we have some very special guests. Yeah, we have, first of all, we have Make-A-Wish San Diego in the audience. Welcome. I see my friend uh, Lisa Clifford in the audience. There we go. Make-A-Wish. And she has a special friend next to her. That's Avila. Give it up for Avila and Leilani. And then I invited Stephanie and Taylor. Stephanie works for Wicked Creative. Give it up for Stephanie there and Taylor. And you know why? No. You know why I wanted to invite Stephanie is hopefully uh, she has a friend named Sammy Hagar. And so hopefully wow. Sammy will be Sammy, on stage Well, no, one he'll day. be on the news stage. Right? Yeah, that's right. Wait till you see Right, Stephanie? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like that was a commitment. Yes, it's a commitment. <laughs> on TV. That's good. Um, all right, so uh, very exciting. It's, uh, it's sort of a... Um, it's kind of an exciting time because our new studios are insane. Yes. And we will do our first show there. I'm thinking on June, June 14th. 14th. So yes. anybody who wants to come, make sure. Mary, you have, you have some sort of a, is there a website people can go to? Not yet. It will be up next month. But uh, currently you can email me at audience at Loft 100 Studios. Because we can take, I'm thinking, close to 100 people at that place. Yes. Wow. So if you guys want to start getting an audience going, yeah. we'll get going. We'll start doing events there at night and stuff like that. We're really excited about going there. And, of course, um, um, uh, it's like we've got all kinds of activations there for you guys. You guys can hang out in a, in a green room that looks like a recording studio. We've got um, narcissist uh, narcissists that you can do selfies with. <laughs> um, it's it's like this, only three times bigger and more cool stuff. And as a result of Jeff Van Gonk, our set designer, who just got nominated for an Emmy for this show. Give it for Jeff. Yee! He is. Uh, um, he's designing that place, and it's super close to being done. So we just we hung up all the wallpaper and. Sets get delivered in the next couple of weeks. Last of all, I want to say uh, congratulations to James East. Yeah. For his Emmy Award nomination. Woo! Um, How do got robbed? Yeah, we got robbed. You got robbed. We got robbed. Well, the Emmys are a wonderful thing because it's uh, self-congratulatory and it's look at me. However, yeah. it's really news-centric here at this, this part of the region. So we have to start doing more news stuff. So we'll get into that. Oh, yeah. Although my guitar is on the set. Yeah. So, you <laughs> so know, your name should go on the Emmy Award. Yeah, okay. our, my guitar is on the set, and, and we're up for the best your, set design. It was your idea. Yes. All right. So uh, maybe I should uh, get that set design. Welcome to the Tommy Show. Good job. That's right. Okay. Let's bring out the guest. All right, let's go. All right, let's bring out our first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, from Star 94 One, then one more win. Give it up for my friend, Jesse Lozano. Sully, just let me do it once, buddy. You know, if this is the last show on, that you're going to do in this studio, I one time want to stand behind this. Hi, friends. How you doing, sir? Oh, my God. Okay. I'm stressed out. 
That was a moment. Did you? Are you taking a photo of this? <laughs> you, you realize he's the heir apparent to Ryan Seacrest, right? I hope. No, he is. I'm you learning right now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right. Jesse Lozano. Thank you guys. You know, Thank you. you. Kids, but you run a board just like this every morning. Oh, just... I do, but not in front of a camera. And that is the thing. Every time I'm watching you do this, I wonder the the, the difference in that right there. Because I uh, I have nobody. Hi, buddy. I have I have no one watching me doing this. this. You have everybody watching this you. I'm this. the national spokesperson for ADHD, or I should be. No, I'm not kidding. A hundred percent. If I didn't have complete. Uh, um, attention distracting, distraction problems. I wouldn't be able to do seven things at one time. I tell, it works yeah. to my favor. It does, and I tell people all the time they have... That's what I say. Well, teachers always told us to shut up in class, but then we, we, we learned that we we're going to turn it into a career someday, right. and so you look back at moments like that, and it's like, that was just my attention. But I'm, but I'm here, and we're ready. I, hey, love Jesse. How he, I love how he just rolls in and oh, puts yeah. a robe on and sits down. Hey, hey, hey. When you are a veteran of this incredible broadcast right here, uh, you, there's some perks in that. This is my 10-plus appearance robe. You're on a double robe. Double. You're gonna get a double robe. Hey. Oh yeah. no. There, there's a there's a uh, there's a little shorts combo that goes with it. <laughs> there absolutely is. I got hey. a quick question. Yes. So when you're at a grocery store, do people come up to you and go, Oh Jesse, what's up? Lately, what the heck? Yeah, I think it's this show. I'm dead serious. You know where I was at the Padre game, and two women that were sitting in front of me, and they had had some margaritas, and these girls were having a blast. They turned around, looked at me, and went, Oh, that's the guy that's with Sully. Yeah. <laughs> We had to leave our seats, though, because he wouldn't leave me alone. I'm yeah, not going to lie to you, but it was absolutely that's like good. as good, good as it gets. So thank you. That's yeah. cool. That's why I'm a hermit. Well, welcome. Stay that's home. why you got to stay home sometimes. All right, we got more guests. Let's go. Let's bring out the second guest. This is a big one. From San Diego State University, former student body president, former San Diego mayor, <laughs> famous famous hey. contributor, Mr. Kevin Faulkner. The honorable. Right here. Oh. Governor, how are you? I'm Rob Envy. <laughs> yes, Rob Envy. That's right. That's right. You could be there. This is your third or fourth show. I think this is number four. I think so, too. No. He's on the... He's, he's got he's... me by... Six. I can do the math. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, question for you. Good to be back. Congratulations to you, because I saw you on a promo on KUSI. You're like one of the newest anchors for uh, San Diego people. I'm helping out, doing some stuff on the show. It's great. Sure, I love great. it. I, you know, I'll take some cues from Jesse here. Yes, I, we, yeah. we talk, we text, I give him some tips here and there. It's called, uh, yeah, it's critique. But I have to call him at 4.30 in the morning, so that's, the, that's my own Jeez. problem. Do you know, do you know there's, a, there's a real link between uh, Mayor Faulkner and the band? Right before COVID, do you remember what we were doing? Oh, I remember it well. So it was towards the end of your tenure as mayor, and every year you did as mayor, not a TED Talk, but a Kev talk. <laughs> we did a Kev talk. Right? And it was in front of thousands of people. And this year was going to be his last Kev talk. And the idea was there's the podium. And there is, I think they call it a kabuki, um, which is where it's like a screen. And the screen comes down and reveals something. He was going to walk out there. Kabuki comes down. Sully band. And we had rewritten the lyrics to five or six songs. Oh, yeah. He was going to sing. We will do that. Yeah, I'm behind this. At somewhere there's a behind the scenes no. tape of that. Could you imagine? We will do that. As he was mayor, he's <laughs> wow. going to walk out. And I think we, th we, we rewrote Sweet Home Alabama, Sweet Home San Diego. Sweet Home San Diego. We had six yeah. of them or something. Did you guys get to rehearsal like that close? We rehearsed we, a ton. We rehearsed I several times. Well, we were within, Which I think. Which is a ton, ton for Sully. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was a ton. <laughs> we, we were within More than a couple three times, huh? Okay. <laughs> Wait, and then what happened? March 2020 happened? Yeah. Yeah, COVID happened. It got, it got canceled wow. literally like two weeks before. Yeah, we were on the phone. Yeah. This is not a thing, right? He goes, no, we'll be fine. We, we will well, live sing another day. Yeah, we have. <laughs> Those words. Do, you have do you have something to add, Mary? Did you say? Yeah, I have uh, dance moves that I taught. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. I forgot. You got to see the dance moves. I got all the footage in my phone. Do we have video then? Oh, yeah. No, I don't think we do. Yeah, that's called leverage. <laughs> I think that got, that's called leverage. That got, is what that's that got called. lost. All right, good. All right, let's bring out let's our third guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the president. CEO of Maplewood, San Diego, Suzanne Welcome. Where do you want it? Here? Right there. Great walk-in. I do. Great walk -in. Hey, I have to admit, Suzanne got the loudest applause. I brought some groupies. She's got a crew. You got a crew. Got a crew. 
Thanks. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. My I'm, first time on a, as a guest on a TV show. So really? Thanks for having me. What are you? Wow. So you are the CEO and president of Make It With San Diego. I am. What what is what falls under that sort of purview of, of responsibility? <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I actually started as an intern almost 20 years ago. I've never worked anywhere else. My whole adult life has been at Make A Wish. Oh, wow. And That's good. Yeah. So here I am. And Make A Wish, just to remind all of us, is an organization that's been around for how long? So we're actually celebrating our 40th anniversary in San Diego this wow. year. Uh, nationally, we've been around about 43 years. And this is and, and how do folks get uh, get their requests into you? to sort of make that wish, so to speak. So kids who are dealing with a critical illness are eligible for Make-A-Wish, that's the only criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no wait list, so once a child is deemed eligible, um, there's no demographic, there's no, you know, any other parameters. If the medical team deems them eligible, then they are able to receive a wish, and the wish process starts right away. Wow, wait with, a minute, oh, sorry. wait a minute. Yeah, Jesse happens to be a talk show host, so just... <laughs> yeah, I was sorry. There's three hosts um, on today, and actually four. <laughs> Hold on fight. I'm the only you novice. You started as an intern. I did, yeah. How did the latter, how did How did you do it? Uh, so I moved here after graduating college at New Mexico State, and I had, like, no um, experience, and I thought, who's going to hire me? And no one. So I worked for free as an intern, um, and I loved nonprofit work, and um, I, I was hired as a WISH coordinator. So I got to, I spent most of my 18 years up until I was CEO um, working on the WISH side. So I got that to, seems like the best that's job. That's cool. Yeah. The, WISH, the WISH, WISH coordinator, yeah. right? That was the best job. I worked with WISH families and volunteers and our medical partners and community partners who helped us make all those wishes happen. That was really incredible. When it comes to celebrities, because the, the power of Make-A-Wish is obvious. It's been there, like you say, 40 years, and people know what it is, especially celebrities. When you have those wishes that are connected to a certain celebrity, mm -hmm. do you have to hunt them down or do you surprisingly start to get phone calls from celebrities from time to time that want to be a part of Make-A-Wish? I think celebrities are really, um, I, I imagine if I were in that role, I would feel really honored that a child could choose to have something or go somewhere, go on a trip, but they wish to meet that person. So celebrities are really kind to Make-A-Wish, really generous with their time. They take your call. They take our call. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, wow. and it's nice because we don't typically have to introduce what Make-A-Wish is. Folks know who we are. Right. Um, how, how large of an organization is it here in San Diego? Pretty so, pretty Yeah, so we grant about 250 wishes a year. Wow. Kids in our area. Here in San Diego. Here in San Diego, oh but goodness. we also we cover Imperial County too. But we also have kids from other parts of the country who wish to come to San Diego. They want to go to Legoland or the zoo or have a military experience yeah. at like yeah. Miramar or with the SEALs. And so we get to host kids from other parts of the country too to have their wishes granted here. Why don't we offer up the band for a fundraiser wow. this year at Valley Up? That'd be really you want to do that? Would you, or is, Amazing. Would, Thank you. Could the kids and stuff. You can't bring the kids, but you can bring their parents. So, okay. Yes. The 21 did, and up crowd. Kind of a boozy uh, <laughs> venue. So how did, how do you know Lisa Clifford, who I love right over there? What's up, Lisa? Give it up for Lisa Clifford. And I believe she has a mic. Yeah. Lisa, you're mic'd up. Let's just get some lights on. So how, how did you get involved with Make-A-Wish? Mary, hand her the mic. She's oh, she's mic'd up. My bad. Um, oh, wait, hold on. We gotta find her. Oh, there she is. Okay, my bad. Hit it. Um, so I got involved with Make-A-Wish San Diego. I've been involved with Make-A-Wish for a long time. Every artist, I work in the music industry, so every artist I've ever worked with, at one point or another, they've been granted or been part of a wish. So I have a soft spot for it. But I got involved with Make-A-Wish San Diego when the lovely Betsy, sitting Betsy. In the Betsy. reached out to me during uh, COVID. There was a little boy named Aegis who wanted to be an astronaut. And there was a component of my boss's company that had access to astronauts. Who's your boss? Tom DeLong. From? From Blink-182. And the founder of Blink-182 is Rick DeVoe, right there, right there who's our manager. <laughs> Boom! Boom! <laughs> it's just why, it's, we, it didn't it's like we did it ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, Betsy reached out to me. We got very lucky that I made a phone call to a dear friend of ours who was on our board, who used to work for Lockheed Martin, now works for Virgin Galactic connected us up within 24 hours to Virgin Galactic, and we had a wish in motion. Cool. We hosted at a place called Gnarlywood. It was unbelievable. It was the most amazing experience. It was incredible. So that's how I got connected. Nice job. And then, who's your friend next to you? This is the lovely Avella. And Avila. She, Avila, sorry. <laughs> um, and so, Avila's wish, why don't you explain what your wish was? So, sure. my wish was a my wish was a um, music recording studio um, for my house, and I love music, so um, I thought this would be perfect. Me and my siblings play all the time, and we just have fun. Avila, are you a singer? Yes, I'm a singer. What's your favorite song to sing? 
I like to sing Count on Me by Bruno Mars. Yeah. Mm. We got it. Oh, we can do that. We got it? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, well, look at James' face right yes, now. Wait, <laughs> let me handle that. Yeah. Oh, we can do that. I have faith in that band. Yeah. What about, can you do, uh, could you do Uptown Funk? Um. Give me another song. I oh. can also do, um, I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. Yeah. Mm. You got that? We can do On that. On a commercial break, you got that? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, you know where this is going. <laughs> what, let's get Jason Mraz in here? In about four blocks, you know where she's going to be. Avila. <laughs> E-Block features Avila right okay. there, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Yeah. That would be Great. awesome. So at the end of the show, will you do it for us? Would you, would you do that at the end of the show for us? Sure. Your, yeah. Yeah. your television debut? Jesse, can we'll you be Jesse's girl at the end of the show? <laughs> no, I can sing that new song Peaches from the Super Mario movie, though. I was really, me and James were just singing it. It's stuck in his Kevin, head can now. you do Sweet Home San Diego before we leave? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. He's got his boundaries up. I need to work on that. I got a question for you. You are spending a ton of time on homeless here in San Diego and, and a number of things. Talk about what your, what your yeah, initiatives are, are right now. You know, we are. We're really, uh, we're trying to set a tone that yeah. says we care about people um, and we need to have a bottom line on our streets. Yeah. The unfortunate reality is our tent encampments have been growing. And so really got a, a great coalition of folks, um, strong bipartisan effort that says uh, we got to do a better job. So we've been working, for example, with our, our former chief of police, Shelly Zimmerman, mm -hmm. uh, folks from the Alpha Project. Um, it's really get the community to come together to say we're going to build more shelters. We're going to enforce quality of life, and we're just going to make a difference in San Diego. And so I'm excited about that. Yeah, are you stuff. shocked with the April numbers that just came out? 1,958 homeless people yeah, in San Diego, in downtown. You, you can see it, Tom, with, 1, with your 10, eyes. Um, One thousand in downtown. Oh, just downtown itself. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going the wrong direction, and and so it's really, you know, I think a lot of folks, and you know, we we spent a lot of time, probably my last couple of years, on more than that than any other issue, um, where we said, look, we're gonna we're gonna get folks off the street. We're gonna we're gonna take that stand, but we're also gonna get people the help and the support that they need, and so. So that's what it's all about. And, and when you do that, it works. We were yeah. the only big city where homelessness actually went down several years ago. So That's I mean, when you were mayor, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick reminder. No, seriously. Yeah. I mean, that was a big thing. And, and, and you did reduce We that. have a formula that works. And so we're going to put it back into place. And I think, and I think that'll be the key to, as I said, help people and make a difference in neighborhoods. Not just in downtown, Tommy, but all San Diego, because the issue is not just in downtown, as we know, unfortunately, uh, but we need help everywhere. So it's not just a San Diego problem, as you know, it's a statewide problem. Are you saying right now you're running for governor? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm not singing the song. Yeah, and he's, and he's not answering that question. Boundaries, Tommy. boundaries. Is, there, is the Alpha Project the way we can donate and such like that for right now? Or is there another organization that you guys? Uh, are I always say yes to the Alpha Project. Okay. I mean, they're doing Bob McElroy. Right. Bob, Bob runs the bridge shelters, as you know, and and that's life changing work. And what do we need to do? We need more of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was mayor, I picked the locations myself, and I said we're going to make a difference by doing it. Uh, it works. We need more of them. Our police officers are doing a great job. They need to have the support that says we're going to help get folks off the street. And when you do that, when you intervene, yeah, that's the key. We know how to do it in San Diego, so we're going to we're going to get back to that. I think there's an organization afoot. I think there needs to be that, that you guys are ahead of that we can. I mean, because look, um, nobody has to. Without getting political, this has not been a great time here in San Diego for, especially for our homeless uh, here in San Diego the last couple of years. So we got to get back to where it was when you were mayor. You mayor around. Kevin Faulkner in with us, or <laughs> the honorable. The honorable. All right. From Maple Leaf, San Diego, Suzanne Husky. And Avi was back there. And Jesse Lozano. There we go. On the air, on the air. Question for Suzanne. Okay. You said you started as an intern. Now you're president and CEO of Make-A-Wish San Diego. How many steps did it take to become the president? This How is, many different jobs? This is my fifth job. 
at really? Make-A-Wish. I was the executive assistant, which is a job we don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. I was a WISH coordinator. Um, I was director of programs and then vice president of mission delivery. And cool. as of July, it'll be two years as CEO. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's, and that's, we're all kind of from radio. And that's kind of almost like a radio story. Jesse, uh, how did uh, yeah, it let's work see for here. you? I leave Palomar College. I start working at Channel 933 internship for about a year. Then I move up to the weekend DJ guy. Now they're going to let me drive the van. Now they have an opening on the morning show. It's the, literally the same story. Yeah, it's just like, a, yes. just like that. And uh, here I am feeling lower than I was a couple years ago. <laughs> well, you're wearing a, you're wearing a, zep, a leopard robe inside of a TV studio. Did I plateau? And this now is I'm back. Not. No, you <laughs> made it, brother. Yeah, okay. this is, okay. yeah, you made this it. Is my mark. Okay. Right. All right. And that's kind of like I did. You know, I sold weed in high school. Okay. Um, just kidding. No, he had an import export business. Yeah, yeah import export business. Got an import export business. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> Kevin's got to go. He has stuff it. to do. All right. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I have a question for you regarding wishes. Yes. So let's talk about the biggest thing you saw or the most ambitious wish you saw come through because there's there had to have been some pretty big yeah so. there's some big wishes i actually want to talk a little bit about aegis's wish that lisa yeah. mentioned so this was in 2020 i know we would all don't want to talk about the pandemic but it was a time where we couldn't really be together we couldn't send kids on planes or to crowded destinations mm -hmm. and aegis was dealing with a nervous system disorder a seizure disorder and he dreamed of being an astronaut and he always someday thought he would grow up and do it and he wished to be an astronaut we had no way to physically send him so with lisa's help and all the amazing people at virgin galactic he had a virtual experience time with an astronaut he asked so many questions beyond his seven years um, and he had an incredible experience ended the day getting this like special telescope and it was just a wonderful day but the impact of his wish I think came a little bit later or we realized it later when we talked to his mom and she said you know it was a wonderful day I've been reflecting on it but she said Aegis always someday thought there was this faraway dream that he would maybe be an astronaut but after his wish he believes with certainty he will grow up and be an astronaut oh, and there and he is. Right the there. Impact. look at him right there got yeah. some b-roll footage that. That's awesome. And, th and that happened, and Lisa Clifford, that happened in what, a matter of just a couple of days? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I reached out to this gentleman, Steve, and I mean, I don't even think it was 24 hours later. I can't remember what it was. It was pretty quick that I got a response so cool. back. And they just said, yeah, I mean, we'll make it happen. And I was, <clears throat> we were on a conference call within a day, yeah. setting it up, and then we had a location, and they went wild. And I mean, it was really... I don't know if it was because we were all going crazy and bored because it was COVID and we all wanted to do something, but I think it was a combination of it. I think everybody wanted to be involved. The venue went to town and turned a sound booth into NASA Central where he could go in and play and look like he was connecting to NASA. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was really, wow. really exciting. It was That's uh, awesome. phenomenal. Suzanne, awesome. do, you, do they ever under ask? Like, do they ever under, like, you can say, come on, that's, come on, you can go, you can do this better. You can do better than that. Let's pump it up a little our bit. Our goal, so a wish is really, really empowering because a lot of our kids are dealing with circumstances that we as adults don't even really, right. uh, you know, have experienced. A lot of their control and choices are taken away. Mm -hmm. So when they choose a wish, it's very empowering for them to choose whatever that might be, whether it sounds big or small to us, but our goal is to, like, get into their little brain and find out all the details that they're thinking of and then make it even bigger. So sometimes they do have asks that feel a little small, but then all the adults get involved. And that's the thing <clears> I love about Make-A-Wish. It pulls this group of strangers together and forms like a little village around the child of astronauts and people from Gnarlywood and you know people that we would have never met and it's like the adults get as into it and then the child just has this day feeling like oh I, I really am an astronaut they're treating me like a peer Wow, Kevin listening to this as you try to move mountains and get people to think along the same lines in some sort of way for this or that is it crazy to hear Suzanne be able to make a phone call and get everyone to collect <laughs> collectively, yeah. collectively get their efforts yes. together <laughs> And yes. just do it all in 24 hours. That, that happens in politics all the time. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, Very little effort, and it just happens. No, it's, uh, well, what, I, it's just listening. I mean, and but, you know, that represents the best of San Diego. Yes. I mean, I mean, when our community comes together like, like no other for obviously all the right reasons. And, and yeah, when, when things like that happen, you feel, you know, that's, that's what makes us special. Um, and I've seen it time and time again, and, you know, the privilege I had to, to serve as mayor. It's groups like Make-A-Wish that are, you know, that's the heartbeat of our city. And that's why we give that support. That's why we give that help. And it makes a huge difference in people's All right. Lives. Speaking of community coming together, you were in Texas a few weeks ago supporting San Diego State men's basketball. Yeah, I was. And, and our town was oh. freaking out. How was it being there? Oh, it was a, a two-day trip that turned into a five-day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I'll be home, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Tommy, I'll tell you, it, it was phenomenal. And you know what was so great is, um, you know, just to see so many people from San Diego that made the trip to Houston. Um, we're like, we've been waiting for literally for 30 years, and I count myself into that. When, we, when I was on uh, campus at San Diego State, that's when we voted for the arena. Like, we voted right. to say, we want to have a facility that we know will attract great coaches. Hello, Steve Fisher and Brian Dutcher, great yeah. players, um, so we could one day be in that position. And so to be there in Houston, you know, to see Butler hit that shot, yeah. to see all the beer and everything that went on my face and head, I mean, there was, there was <laughs> there's no a, other, there's no a great other picture. place that I would be. Um, um, and it just, I mean, and then, of course, to be there for the championship game, so many Aztecs. I mean, yes. it was just, it was a San Diego You were event. student body president right there. You I was. Were, you weren't okay. former mayor. You Back were, in the day. You were yeah. SDSU student body That's president. That's what I'm known for, mainly. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but on that floor, you were in the yeah. midst of everybody. I see you sent me a picture, and it, oh, was, yeah. it was pandemonium right there. It, it, it was, looked like a regular home game in terms it, of it was, people. You know, and once, you know, in, in especially that, that semifinal game, you know, he hits that shot, one second left. Everybody's going crazy. Nobody's stopping for, after like four or five minutes, and they're trying to get the other teams because there's another game on, like right after. Oh, that's and right. so they start shooing people up to the, to the mezzanine. And so the mezzanine becomes like this Mardi Gras San Diego yeah. State, you know, wow. gathering. And people were just high-fiving, yelling. Yeah. I mean, I lost my voice for four days. And That's fantastic. So, for all the right reasons. That oh, yeah. Butler jump shot, that's equivalent to Garvey's home run, right? Oh, it's, the it's, Locker's yeah. home oh, run. It, it is right. Finley? There, yes. The I Finley mean, shot? For just, sure. just the roar. I mean, it was, it, it, like I said, waiting for a long time for that to happen. And, you know, and I, I was in an event just yesterday with, and, and had the chance to see Coach Dutcher. You know, he said, I haven't had a day off since he got back. Oh, yeah. And he is serious. I mean, yeah. he's recruiting. Uh, you know, we got great, some, you know, some of the greatest athletes that we have in the kid. They're great, you know, young men, too. Staying with the program, out recruiting more. So I'll tell you, the future looks uh, real bright for San Diego State. You're, um, right. um, let's get back to deploying politi in, in politics. You were able to, though deploy a lot of people on both sides of the aisle when you were mayor. Is that a secret sauce that you have? Is that something you planned on? Or do you, was it just sheer will putting your head down and say, we're doing this? You know, I... Because it is a different time now than it was then. We yeah, had, it's more polarized. And, and, and it, it even was then. But I've, I've, I've always been a big believer of, like, we're San Diegans, first and foremost, right? It's not Democrat, Republican. And yeah, there's a time for that, I suppose. But when you're, when you're you know, organizing and doing good stuff in the neighborhoods, it's not about politics. It's about, no. you know, are we paving our streets? Are we helping people get off, you know, get off the roads? Are we supporting our police officers and our firefighters and and so I always took that approach Sully um, I think it served me well I think it served the city well I wish more of our politics uh, particularly on the statewide and national level focused on that because when you do that then I think you get more people involved and some of the other you know stuff is that's just not who I am. We, well, we don't think you get anything done we got to talk about how to get back there again because that, that's a big thing on the air on the air Kevin Faulkner right there yeah Susan yeah. Husby Jesse all of our Make-A-Wish friends out there of course, the Sully Band. Let's roll. Oh, Kevin's getting nervous. <laughs> I'm not going to make you sing. Not that I even could make you sing. But I have to tell you, we have some stuff in the can with you that yeah, we, we need to I somehow know. get, like, we need to somehow do a fundraiser with you up there or something, because it was some fantastic stuff. And, and I can't remember all this. When I come back from my 10th episode and I'm wearing the robe, I'll feel a little more. That right. is what I'm talking about. Jump on stage and we'll get it happening. Just Kevin knows how to do this. I will be your backup. That's correct. But I'm a TikTok dance guy now. I've switched things up. I, I sing less. <laughs> right. So I'll be off to the side. Maybe I'll do interpretations of what Kevin's doing. How does, how does a grown-ass man say, I'm a TikTok dance star now? Well, well you ready for this? I'm I, ready. I still try to cater to a younger audience, so I have to say it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're catering to your wife and your kids. You're right. <laughs> yes. I, I have a 21 year old daughter now. Hey, but like TikTok is. can make you a lot of money. It can. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, just ask the Chinese government. <laughs> <laughs> Too much? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey how's, um, how's one more win going? Dude, so good. We're, uh, we got another golf tournament that's going to happen in September. Uh, we're teaming up with an organization called T3, and they're going to raise a ton of money for high school athletics with us. And uh, we're doing a brand new seven man sled to the Warner Spring High School's football team in the fall. Oh, which, like, okay. And we're talking about I was a thinking school. like Big Bear or something like no, that. No, no, we're going out to Warner Springs, and you were talking about kids who are all a collection of 
four different reservations that yeah. have no sort of resources um, after school sports wise and whatever mm -hmm. and these guys still find a way to come out play some football volunteer their time which is what every high school athlete does and so we always try to showcase one more win football. provides athletic equipment to right. the high schools right yep 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 and then that wasn't always a thing when we were in high school we got to play sports there was stuff already there well it's see that was what I noticed I started noticing you know when I was in high school we would go to certain schools and they would have a van with their logo on the side and matching backpacks and then I'm from Escondido and we all have to buy our shorts at uh, a big five you and know then when you went to play Cobra Kai high school they had all the stuff there, that's what I'm right? saying I mean there really is kind of an uneven thing when it comes to yeah. just showing up and what's your self-esteem like as a high school athlete well sometimes it starts with the 25 year old uniform you're wearing as you know in comparison to guys that have fresh Nike gear on so and it was like, 40 years for Castle Park High School that you took care of that's so right thank you very they very had much. Uh, it was, leather helmets no they were uh, it was their soccer team <laughs> and they, uh, oh, they, they they had not had new uniforms in 26 years or something oh, like really? that yeah. And yeah yeah so yeah. anyways if you are watching still this wearing right earth now, tones avocado right. brown right. oh bro yeah. no yeah. carpet in the, the elastic had, there was not even elastic anymore yeah. I will say you can nominate your sports program if you're a coach listening right now or if you're a parent of a kid that plays high school athletics and the team is struggling with resources, just go to onemorewin.org. Uh, nominate your team, and that's how we select what, three teams a year. What's the number one sport you support? Is it usually football? Uh, um, that, that seems like the most expensive amount it, of year, it right? is. It is the big one. I'll tell you what, girls softball gets overlooked big time. Girls basketball gets overlooked. You know, Boogie um, Boogie Ellis, who plays, who's now going to play with Brawny. Oh, up I thought at, you were going to uh, say USC. the Boogie Board team over uh, no, at PB no, no. High. Okay. Bo Boogie Ellis, who's now going to play with Brawny up at USC, he came from Mission Bay High School, and I got an email from their girls basketball team that said, hey, we have this kid that's committed to Duke. He's going to be the next, you know, this, that, or the other thing. Yeah. But we don't even get acknowledged as a basketball program. So we went and, and gave them all the resources the boys team was getting because they had a top prospect. And that's all we're looking to do. Which is One more win. win. One more win. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Thank I got you, buddy. a question for Makerwood San Diego, Suzanne. Can you tell us about the 5,000th wish? Yes. So next month, we are granting our chapter's 5,000th wish wow. in our area. Um, a little boy named Eric is six years old. He's dealing with a brain tumor. No. And um, his wish is to meet and play with the San Diego Padres. Wow. So we are going to be granting his wish at Petco Park at the game on June 15th. There's going to be a lot of surprises in store Who do they play on the 15th? Uh, the Guardians, formerly the Cleveland Indians. Because yeah. yeah. um, I get some blank stares sometimes when we say the Guardians. Um, <laughs> and his... the, the What's going on with Eric is he's dealing with a brain tumor. He's he's responding really well to treatment, but he's had some mobility challenges because of his treatment. So he's in occupational therapy, physical therapy, and his medical team has rallied so much around this idea of his wish being granted that they've turned it into like his spring training, and he's learning all the all the exercises are focused on catching and pitching and throwing and being able to be strong enough to walk and run out on the field. Um, so we're so he'll so he'll, he'll be introduced on the field. He'll have be Padre on the field. On. He'll be part of the team. He'll have a locker room. Uh, I don't want. I hope his I hope he's not listening. We're watching oh yeah! Don't I don't give it away. Surprises. Walk up okay. song. Walk up song. Let's get a walk. Up. Yes. Yes. Um. Peaches, 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 peaches. Right, James? Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. and I, I assume the Padres were absolutely right. I mean, the Padres have been with us our entire 40-year history in San Diego. I mean, they've always been a requested wish for kids, um, but they've also just been through the Padres Foundation. They support so many organizations, but Make a Wish is one of their, <coughs> one of their top. And actually, this is our third milestone wish we've granted at Petco Park. So, back in 2012, we granted our 3,000th wish at Petco Park. In 2017, we granted our 4,000th wish, but neither That's of those awesome. kids happened to have baseball wishes and they invited us in anyway. So let me, wow. so you're, you are approximately granting five wishes a week. 250 a year? Yeah, something? that's about on average, yeah. Wait, I got a calculator. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 4.7. Yes, thank you. <laughs> How in the world do you guys, is it all San Diego? I mean, are, are there San, it's, it's all San Diego kids doing San Diego wishes, or is there some L.A. wishes? Or? It's all San Diego and Imperial. So the way we have chapters in Orange County and L.A., they have their own chapters. Um, we have a small staff. We have volunteers throughout the, the city, the county, and some of them are here in the audience today that help us do our work because there's no way we could not only grant a wish but make it really special and customized for each child. Like Avila had a lot of special, you know, details that were customized just for her, and it's because of these volunteers. Is that, hey, Avila, is that studio done? over there is that is is your recording studio in play yet yes it's all done and um, when i first saw it i was really excited <laughs> can we can we maybe send a camera crew over there where you're doing your recording and stuff like that Sure. Yeah? yeah. No, send, no, and some, what, what, and some LED you? lights and strobe, like yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. You don't want the camera. Well, I want to I, I think we need to share what's going on there. Yeah, what, when's, right. your, when's your single drop? <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this. So, uh, mid definitely can play it on my show. Count on that. You can yeah, play it on my right? show. Yeah.
Yes. I think that we all need to see her walk up on stage here. This Let's show. Let's do it. Great. I'm I mean, you want to finish the show? Yeah. Doing a song with the band? Because I know we kind of, because her and I rehearsed on the break and she's got it. <laughs> Next break, the break after that, we're gonna finish the whole show with you. How about that? Okay. Well, okay All right. There we go. Oh, well, nice job. I have a retroactive apology. <laughs> Oh, Can this should be good. Wait, uh -oh. pause. Sir, repeat that again. I have, you know, a, I have a retroactive apology for Kevin. <laughs> retroactive. You know, this should be good. <laughs> so, this is something he did before that you forgot about, and now he's going to clear his conscience. I want to say, there was a day I came home from work, and I told my wife that this guy, Kevin Faulkner, was sending my chargers to L.A. And <laughs> that is so untrue. A couple months went by, and Dean came to the radio station. And he sent him to L.A. He said... You guys can ask me any questions you want about this new stadium we want to vote for. Any questions about the Chargers, I want to be transparent. And after that interview, I realized yeah. he was not sending the Chargers to L.A. <laughs> That's exactly right. right. Kevin, I apologize <laughs> for even yeah. thinking That's that okay. because that dude was out of here. Dean was out of here before <laughs> he said, said a word. He was you're, gone. You're a good San Diegan. Holy That's mo right. Kevin will tell you this because we because I was doing afternoons at Kogo at the time. And you were on the air with me all the time talking about that. And our argument was they sh they. <sighs> The Chargers came into Clear Channel at one point. And I don't know if you remember this, but they gathered all of us in a room. That was the one I'm talking about. With him in there. And then yes. they and then they held me and Steve Hartman back. Okay? <laughs> okay. Steve Hartman from, I don't, I don't remember this sports station. I think it was Mighty 6 or, or, or 1360. 1360, yeah, I think, yeah. So, and they said, what can we do to change this narrative? And I said, stop calling it San Diego Charger Stadium. Call it, call it San Diego Stadium. And Kevin came up with the idea that it was a, that it was a civic asset. $25 million, taxpayer-funded, 1968, okay? Um, won awards, and if you think about it, it made San Diego a little nicer place to be when you think about Major League Baseball. You think about the All-Star Game. You think about uh, um, uh, street scene there. You think about the NCAA championships. Have I, you think about Cheap Trick, Rolling Stones, Billy Joel. Have I mentioned the Chargers once? <laughs> right. Not even one time, and that's, and that's where the issue was, because I will tell you, to his credit, he was pitching this stadium as a civic asset right. versus the, the Chargers were just the biggest tenant. And, and, and it was, I believe that, and I'll just say this now, and I said it then, the reason the Chargers went to L.A. is because Spanos thought that the Chargers would be worth a billion dollars. Right. That's that right. was all it was. Oh, that's right. He, he told us at that meeting, he said it, and I can't even believe that he said this. He said, he said, the worst deal in L.A. for us is still better than the best deal in San Diego. Ooh. And when he said that, I was like, oh, they're gone. They're dead Did to they me. Already pack? Are they, do they have the U-Haul pulled Do you already? watch the Chargers? <laughs> I, I, I can't watch it. I grew up in this town. My hey. dad brought – had, we had season tickets when I was eight years old to watch John Hadle, Lance Allworth, Dude. Uh, Gary, Gary Garrison, Garrison, right? Um, I can't watch it. I, I love to watch them lose, bro. I love to watch them lose. I, will, I, will. I hate to say that. <laughs> can you, can, I will, I'll, I'll only say this. This is an exciting time for San Diego sports, right? <laughs> hey, there he is. Uh, speaking with of our Padres, with, with our Aztecs, and, and a MLS on the way. I see MLS that. on the way. Yep. Great. Chargers are dead to me. <laughs> with you. With you, big brother. You got the crown on that one. Yes, sir. I want to give a shout out to. Uh, she turned 16 years old. It's Devin and Chloe's little sister, Haley. Haley, welcome. Hey. Haley. Let me tell you about Devin and Chloe. 
Devin Doan and Chloe. Devin Doan, of course, is our big camera operator over there. You've seen him. He's got a uh, he's got a uh, uh, Instagram or TikTok thing called Probably Vodka. He holds up a cup that says Probably Vodka. Roger that. But he, but he does a lot of political commentary. Fantastic. And of course, Chloe is our production assistant. Actually, go, moving up to floor director, moving into big spots here at Loft. Yeah. We got half their family. Hey, just does poor Haley feel like now she has to work here? Yeah, she's, well, yeah she, we've got her on the intern program. Okay. Yeah, she, she's, she's going to, she's in the, the intern. She starts in the mailroom. Wait, she could be the CEO of the Sully Show There's eventually only two someday. Jobs. It's there to this. Okay, Just Roger. Boom. That. <laughs> That's it. Um, I do want to, I want to acknowledge, though, uh, one of our producers, uh, Bianca Zerpa Delgado, who's been with us, I think, for three years. And unfortunately, and this is what happens in this studio. So just with all the interns, as you guys know, they come, and you know, we had Jack Faulkner as, yeah, as probably true. the best cameraman <laughs> until we saw Devin, came in here, and they all break our hearts because they don't want to live in this environment for the rest of their lives. Bianca Zerpa Delgado, come out here. She's our producer. Her last day is today. Yay! Oh. She's coming out somewhere. There she is. You, you have been a pleasure. Bianca. Wow. It's a bowl of uh, fruity pebbles and uh, <laughs> Thank you. She's the reason that we get Emmy Awards in this thing. Yeah, and she yeah. does all our books. Well done, congrats. Good to see you. Yeah. She's Congratulations. Taking, she's taking off to, uh, she's taking off, a, at least she says she's fleeing the country. Um, but but uh, she's, uh, she, you always have a job back here, and you're and Tommy will always write to the check. Yeah. You'll never see her again. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never see her again. Is that, that forever? Is, is that a mug full of uh, cocoa pebbles or something? Like, what was that? What was that? What was that? I think it was brownies. Brownie bites. Mary, were you responsible for that? Yes. Did you go to cupobrownie.com? or something like that. That was like a big giant. Are you getting all weeped up because Bianca's leaving? Mary does. Uh, I work with her a lot. Mary, Mary, Mary does a national TV show here called America Trends that airs on the Biz Television Network at about 40 million homes. She's crying. I forgot that that was your producer. That's right. She's not just our producer. She's very close. Well, let me introduce you to Tommy Sablon. Do you know Tommy? I, if you need a... He's already... Yeah, oh, we're he's already, already the one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, signing you up. Well, that sealed well, that deal, didn't it? That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, wow. Okay, so I want to hear what's next for, for, for you, uh, Honorable Mr. Faulkner. I'm trying to intern on the Tommy show. Yeah. That's right. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but if I start now, I can work my way up. But you are on KUSI. <laughs> you're, you're hosting San Diego People. It's been great. Guest hosting San Diego People. I love it. And doing political commentary and talking about what we should be doing in this town, uh, which I love. I'm some consulting, doing some work up at Pepperdine. It's, so it's, uh, it's keeping me busy. But you ran a $3 billion company called San Diego. That qualifies you for any CEO position in this country. Um, are, are you trying? Yeah, right? Yeah. Tommy's yeah. like, yes, I need one. Yes, yes, I yes. mean, and, and, and seriously, have you have you thought about going into the private sector as a CEO of one of our you know big companies here, or, or have you kind of put your eye on the ball yeah, on, you know, on, I'll on tell service you, so, stuff? You know, it's been great to take uh, you know half a step back for like the, the last year. Yeah. Um, you know, having been not just obviously two terms as mayor, but two terms on the council, and so when you're going, as this guy knows, you know, 24/7, and you know, yeah. we all know that many days a week. So it's been great. So. I'm, you know, I'm plotting and scheming and figure out what's yeah. next. I have a question on behalf of Jesse Lozano. Oh. Uh, Jesse Lozano has always said, you know, I wonder if I could be mayor of Escondido. <laughs> Jesse, he grew up in Escondido. I told Kevin about this in the green room. Yeah. Is being a mayor a good idea? I told him, yes, he should absolutely do it. Um, and wow. I said, if you love people, which he does, uh, and if you can do eighth grade psychology, you too can be mayor. <laughs> He's not talking about constituents. He's talking I about people that. you work with. That's the only thing a mayor has ever said to me to give me the slightest bit of confidence in this idea. <laughs> Just that right there, the eighth grade psychology. All I'm with that. Yes. All people. And, I, and I see you at the, you know, I see you at all the events in that robe right there. Uh, and that's, now on, yes. And that's, and that's the moniker. Is it, this it, is the, I, I yeah. see a mail piece. I do, too. Right yeah, the only I'm, person who campaigns in a fire robe. <laughs> holding, De holding Devin's probably vodka mug. Yes. Six, <laughs> I'm one of you. And then James East is behind me playing the guitar and riffing anytime I want to jump into song. Yeah. I mean, I could be the all-around, yes. Okay. And I have a question for... <laughs> I have a question for Suzanne yeah. from Make-A-Wish San Diego. Is it too early to ask you about the gala on October 14th? Can you oh, talk about that? Oh, yeah. So one of our biggest fundraisers is our Black Tie Gala. It's called Wine and Wishes. It's held at the Fairmont Grand Del Mar. It's on October Whoa. 14th. And Wait a minute. Get on my phone. Are we? Yeah. What? That's Hold on. Coming to that. <laughs> Can we say that? Lee, are we yeah. playing that event? Yeah. You are. We're playing that event. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I recognized that. Uh, right on. Okay. We were leading into that. So, yes, we'll have amazing entertainment from the Sully Band. That'll be good. So, yes. Putting that in my phone. You'll, you'll have Thank that you. Sully Band because I like to, you know, when I'm with those things, I want to sit down and have <laughs> chicken and the wine. Maybe we'll do a Sweet Home San Diego rendition. Yes! 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 Yes!
<laughs> we had, we had, we I had, think we had Uptown we, Funk. We had Uptown we had downtown Funk. We had Downtown Funk. Right? Had, They're all coming back to me. It, it, it will all come back. Yes. The, I think you just do a set. Mary will help us with um, Mary will help I, us I, with I, I think you do a set. I got it. Um, wow. if, if people want to get involved. Ain't that a kick yep. in the camp? Ain't that a kick yeah. in the camp? Yes, that was it. <laughs> ain't that a kick Dean in the camp? Dean Martin. That's so good. That was so great. Yeah. They're all coming. Yeah. yeah it's all Rehearsal good. next Wednesday. That's all. That's just, uh, <laughs> um, how do people get involved? If, if, I mean, obviously, when parents are concentrating on their children at a horrible time in their lives, one of the last things they're thinking about is, I know, let's let's go get them, let's go get them um, uh, a wish with the San Diego Padres or the or, or whatever. How do you guys approach that, or do they approach you? How does that happen? So we don't typically approach families because Make a Wish has sort of a, there's a misconception that we grant um, wishes to kids that are end of life, and it's not the case. A lot of our kids, more than anyone ever thinks, um, go on to live long lives beyond their illness because medicine has advanced to the point where that's possible. Um, but the wish is often the thing that is the turning point. It's the motivation. It's the, um, yeah. the it goes hand in hand. A lot of physicians believe that the wish is part of the treatment, and so we work with the medical teams and they understand who's eligible which of their patients and so they they introduce it to the family and then the referral starts there but the impact of a wish isn't saved for when the wish itself is granted it's really that first yeah. visit with wish granting volunteers who want to know what makes you happy when you're having a tough day where does your mind go what 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 would be your best day ever we don't talk about the illness we know why our, our kids have been referred to us we don't talk about that we focus on what makes them happy well and here's and here's the big question how do we raise money for you what's what how do people donate so you can donate toward our 5,000th wish. The Padres are not only hosting our wish and hosting us in Petco Park, they also have put up $125,000 as a matching gift challenge. So uh, you can go to uh, wish.org slash San Diego. Well, Laughlin Hunter Studios will put five grand to that. Hey. Let's go. Oh, All right. You. That's amazing. Wow. That's and, um, amazing. Love that. And, uh, oh my God, thank you so much. Got a question for Kevin Faulkner. How do we raise money for your gubernatorial <laughs> That, uh, politics today, Tom. But uh, you hold that thought. All right, um, guys. You know what I see in Kevin's face? You know how Ryan Seacrest stopped doing the show with uh, Kelly Ripa? He has, a, he has a calm now. Yeah. Kevin has a calm. He has a calm to him now. Yeah. I don't know if he wants yeah. to do governorship. I'm gonna call it confidence. Let's go. Avila's All right. next. A very, very special e segment for you guys. Avila. Here. here we go. On the air. It's on the air. Welcome, you guys. Let's Thank you so much. It's such a great uh, honor to have Make a Wish San Diego here. Thank you guys for all coming in, and the rest of our studio audience. And so thank you for coming in and organizing all this. Thank you, thank you Lisa. All right, now let's get to all the other multiple charities. So one more win, give it up for three. one more win. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Mayor Kevin Faulkner, who is yeah. soon going to be governor, according to Tommy. Man, what are what They're our latest? Not listening to you, are they, Kevin? Our latest host of uh, Good Morning, uh, not Good Morning, Center, San Diego People. Yes, on KUSA. I think you should have your own television program, talking like, sort of like. Talking about San Diego, um, you know, getting some of the big names in San Diego. To talk the about Faulkner them. Five. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. The You're Faulkner Five. Now. I like it. Yeah. Nice oh. alliteration, Tommy. They would never, yeah, he's going to charge you for that, though. He's going to charge you for that. He would never be so a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, I want to I want to try something here because you, you guys are familiar with when we've done this a million times on the show, where I make them play a song they've never played before. This is it. We've never played this song live. I don't even think we played a rehearsal. I mean, we, we all play it at home, like in the garage and stuff. Like, yeah, who hasn't worked in this song? But, but of course, we have Avila here from Mako with San Diego. Give her a big hand. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do this. Let's just, let's, just, let's just make sure you got it, okay? And you said you, you, said you do Jason Reyes? Okay. <laughs> Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, we got it. Okay, you sure? Right here. Get on right there. Yeah. 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 Tommy, Tommy had a great idea. Let's have. Uh, no, this will be like Saturday Night Live, right? Like, remember when they when they do the when they you're probably not up that late, but there's a show called Saturday Night Live. But you know when they do musical guests on TV shows, and you got a very special person um, um, announcing you. 
I say we throw the camera right to you. Yes. Yeah. Make a wish San Diego right. will introduce you. Ready? Are you guys ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Take a ride to be alive, alive, alive. So I 